Rob Kendall speaking with Brian Woodard, the head coach of the Plainfield Quakers. Coach, how's it going? Coach, doing well. And yourself? Doing just great. Obviously, a tough game on Friday night, but really a game, and we talked about this during the JV game yesterday, three times inside the 10 without points. That's ultimately the difference in the entire game. Absolutely. Yeah. And we got our butts kicked. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know how to, you know, you can't sugarcoat it. Um, it's very disappointing, very frustrating. Um, you know, you, you can, as I, you know, talk to our coaches Saturday morning, it's, it's very easy. I mean, you, you can point statistically to exactly uh, where we failed, where we came up short. Um, and, and one of those probably, you know, well, not probably, but number one indicators you just mentioned was, was red zone effectiveness. Uh, one for four for us, uh, three for three for them you know, and uh, uh, that's a critical part of the field where, where you have to execute at your highest. Um, and, you know, the, 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 bi the biggest one obviously was the, uh, the fumble because that's, that's a 14 point swing, right? It's, we're giving up a score, right? By fumbling it and they return it 99 yards for a score. So uh, that one was, was really backbreaking in terms of where it happened in the game. I know as a fan that is always demoralizing and hearing it is demoralizing, watching it is demoralizing. As a coach, how do you try to respond to something like that? Because obviously we just get to, in this case, me, you know, yell at my computer as I'm hearing the broadcast or the fan in the stands. You guys got to keep playing the football game. Well, you're exactly right. And it, it is not, uh, it, it's not, it's not easy. You know, I mean, in that, in that point, of the game, <clears throat> you know, we, we were um, ready to get back and, and make it a one score game. I mean, we were right there. Momentum was on our side. You know, I, I, I felt really good about where we were. Um, and to answer your question, how do you, how do you go back out and play? Um, you know, you, you just do, you know, I mean, I, I, I grabbed our defensive guys and I just reminded them said, Hey, you guys get to go play defense. Go find a way to go get a stop. Let's let's get one stop. Let's not worry about what the scoreboard says. Let's not let's you know push that aside uh, and just go play this series of downs. And that's that's kind of been my motto for years. Of um, when you know you have those difficult moments, you can't worry about you know what the scoreboard is going to say at the end. You just have to play that next play. Get you know get through that one or make something happen on that one uh, and then let the chips fall where they may. And obviously we'd come in with a three game win streak and we talked about the huge win off Decatur central yep. uh, was, was, as a coach. Is it hard to keep, especially high school kids? I mean, we hear this all the time with college kids and even professional teams where, you know, you had a letdown, you get a big win, the, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the next game. Is that something you felt might've happened or was it just, man, we just didn't execute. Well, I, I think all of the above. I mean, I, I, we we were we were flat in pregame. We were, um, you know, we were flat coming out of the locker room to start the game. And I, I don't, you know, I, I mean, listen, I take a lot of responsibility as a head football coach and a position coach when when things go wrong. I'm not gonna, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna tippy toe around things. I'm not, you know, I'm I'm not Frank Reich or these guys that make millions of dollars. I'm gonna shoot you absolutely 100% straight. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you as, as, a, as a player. If you're not ready to play a game on Friday night at seven o'clock, I mean, you only get 10 guaranteed games. That was week number seven. Right. So you got seven, eight, nine, ten. You've got in that case, you had four guaranteed football games left in this 2022 season. If you're not ready to play a game, there's nothing I can do. I mean, if you're relying on me as a head coach or your position coach to get you hyped up or whatever, whatever dumb word you want to use, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't. I mean, I, I'm excited to coach. I, I love coaching our team. Uh, I, I was disappointed uh, with with how we started the game. So that was that's that's a really long answer to say. I don't think we were ready to play the game. Uh, number two. Uh, you know, it was it was a little bit of an execution issue. We knew Franklin was going to be good. I mean, they they go down, they start the game. They've got a you know a six minute or so, fourteen play drive. But hey, you know what we do? We come right back and we answer with a you know with a with a sixteen seventeen play drive, also lasting six minutes. The difference, we didn't score. You know, and um, I, I felt like you know had that gone maybe differently, maybe our attitude, maybe our, our mojo, maybe our whatever it was, maybe that changes as well. Don't know. Right. It didn't happen. So we'll never know. 
when you, uh, one of the things I've loved about the show over the years is you, we get to talk about some kind of, you know, maybe behind the scenes things or things people don't think about. You talk about coming out flat in warmups. Like, tell us what that means and how as a coach, you look at that and go, yeah, we're flat today in warmups. Like, what are you looking yeah. for? What do you see? Yeah, and that's a great question. And I, you know, there's not a, there's not a, a, a specific, you know, marker that you're like, oh, we're ready you know, Hey, we're, or we're not flat or whatever. It's just, it's one of those vibes that you just feel. And you know what I mean? It's, you can't, it's the old, uh, it's what, what was the old quote about, uh, uh, uh seeing stuff you sit and yeah, see. Yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. That's exactly right. Thank you. So that's the best way I, I can describe that. Um, and, and also just kind of comes with body language of your players. Um, and, and that's, that's one of those things that, a coach can only know that because you've spent literally, I mean, think about it from a, from my perspective as a head football coach, how many, you know, January, February afternoons in the weight room, APC, all the practices, all the, I mean, literally thousands of hours around players, you know, when your guys have a little pep in their step, a little bounce in what they're doing, a little swagger about them. And when they're just kind of going through the motions, you know what I mean? You just, you just know it. Is it a thing where then you go, hey, you guys better play today? I mean, like, what do you even do at that yeah. point? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I recognize it, and and I tried it. I did it on Friday. Brought our guys together. Brought our, you know, and, and our coaches were doing the same, right? And and we we tried to push the buttons, tried to talk to our guys about, hey, look, you know, great night, great opportunity, great crowd, um, you know, two good football teams. What an awesome opportunity we have. Let's freaking go. You know, let's go. And you, you, you rally around your seniors. Hey guys, get us going. You know, you rally around your captains guys, get us going. Um, and, and it, it um, again, I, I'm not trying to bad mouth our kids. It's not like this was every single kid on the team. Like, eh, coach, I'd just rather go home. You know, it wasn't that it was just, you know, we, we were looking for, I just, we were on our heels a little bit. And, and I think the best way to describe it was we were hoping something positive was going to happen so we could rally around something. I think that's the best way to describe it. We were looking for an event to rally around. We didn't bring our own energy. And then when that event didn't happen, they go down and score seven. We don't score. You know, we just kind of, we just kind of stayed. We didn't, you know, we just stayed flat. If, if that makes sense. Uh, before we look ahead to this coming Friday, what just one more question about that. And we've talked about this over yeah. the years. How do you deal with, or do you deal with, I guess, any differently a Saturday and Sunday after a win like you had against Decatur Central versus a performance you're very disappointed in, like the one you had Friday? Um, for, you know, from an organizational standpoint, um, not really, not at all. I mean, and you know, not to be, you know, coach speak all the time, but you know, the standard for preparation is the standard. There is no, hey, well, when it, when, when it's good and when it's easy, we're going to go all out, man. We're going to spend four, five, six, seven hours in the office on a Sunday. But you know what? When it's bad, oh, man, hey, the Colts play at one. Let's go ahead and see if we can get out of here. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I, you know, the, the, the standard for what we have to do as coaches remains the same every week. And if, if a coach on our staff, isn't that way they're not going to be around very long because they're not going to like working for me because we do things a certain way we we cross the t's we dot the i's now in terms of how you deal with your players uh, i think that's the that's the art of coaching you have to know when to really push hard uh sometimes you have to know when to to, to dial back you know and, and just and just talk to them i mean i'm you know i, I mentioned many many times you know, i've been lucky the past couple of years to be a, a position coach you know past couple of years it's been my kid Right. So it's been easy to talk to him. But, you know, like this year, Gavin Hendry is one of my position players. And, you know, I pulled him aside yesterday. And we just talked just like, you know, hey, what, what do you think? What you know, just just having that kind of moment of, hey, look, we're going to you know, we're going to regroup, you know, and, and we're going to get through this, stay the course, you know, take a little time away and then come back and be ready to work on Monday. All right, let's thank our sponsors who made our broadcast possible all year long. CCB Contracting, Geodis, Gannell Financial, Julia Burbridge of REMAX Centerstone Plainfield, Kyle Burnfield Mortgage Lender at Flagstar Bank, Team Turley Fairway Mortgage, Bailey and Wood Financial Group, African Plum Home, My IT Indy at myitindy.com, I-70 Record Service and Garage, BGW Construction LLC, Beacon Sign Company, Jeff Brown Photography, Karen Alexander Photography, and Whitlow's Towing. All right, Coach, there was once upon a time when we used to do these broadcasts where 
if we made it to the final third of the season, we felt pretty good uh, because it was Franklin, it was Whiteland, it was Martinsville. We should win those games. Uh, we no longer feel super good about the final third of the season because they're all really good. The middle of that is this Friday night, senior night, Whiteland at home. Tell us about it. Yeah, Whiteland, um, uh, you know, previously ranked number one in 5A, um, you know, caught a caught a Martinsville team that you just mentioned at, at the at the right time, and, and they beat them, right? And that makes you feel really good because that's your week nine opponent. <laughs> so, you know, like you said, it's it's uh, it doesn't get easy. Um, you know, last week I said that Franklin was the most complete team <clears throat> in terms of special teams, uh, you know, throw it, run it, defend it really well. I don't – Whiteland is a different kind of complete. They don't They don't want to throw the ball very much. Uh, they are definitely and, and have been for 17, 18 years. Coach Fisher has been there since 2005, I think. Um, you know, they are – it's jet motion, uh, run the ball down your throat. They do it uh, so, so well. I mean, their offense is, is, is well-oiled. Um, they have – I think I just counted before we, we came on the air here. I think they, they start uh, 10 seniors on offense, 10 out of 11 are seniors, um, uh, eight returning starters on offense. And so they're, they're really experienced, um, not quite as many uh, returners on defense, but a lot of juniors and seniors, no doubt. So um, this might be the best football team that we've played all year. Um, in terms of uh, their personnel, um, they're they're just it's 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 a daunting task to get ready for these guys because you know exactly what what you're going to get um, because they are so experienced and they are so physical of a football team. So uh, the challenge is is uh, it's real, man. It's going to be you know we're going to have to bring it. There's no question about that. Let's talk a little bit about senior night, and it's an interesting senior class, and it just doesn't seem possible, but I know we talk about this every year, that as we get older, time just seems to all run together. But it's been two years since the COVID season. Yeah. That doesn't seem possible. Yeah. And these guys were like just sophomores then. It's a weird senior class because they were right at the epicenter of maybe the most confusing, weird time in high school yeah. football history in the state. Yeah. And I hadn't thought about it, you know, from that, that perspective, but, you know, <clears throat> looking at it now, you know, how, how difficult that must have been for this group, because, you know, you're coming in as a sophomore, Hey, it's my first year. And then, you know, in the off season and then wham, that happens. And, you know, we're, we're coaching, you know, via zoom and, and Google meets and all those kind of things. And, and now they, they stayed the course, you know, they, they battled through uh, and, and here they are. You know, and and uh, I really I really enjoy, um, you know, coaching this team and, uh, you know, 98 percent of our guys are 100 percent bought in every day all the time. You know, I know I just was very critical of our you know preparation in advance of the Franklin game. But, you know, by and large, this is a really great group uh, to, to coach and to be around. And uh, that is all, you know, the foundation of that is your senior class. So, yeah, we're, you know. Senior night is Friday. Uh, it's an emotional night for, for a lot of a lot of parents. You know, it's 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 kind of like we talked way early in the show. It's like dropping your kid off for college. Like your kid is like, hey, I'm ready to roll. Like, I can't wait for this to get started. Drop my stuff off. You know, let's let's go. Um, senior night's the same way. You know, players, you know, by and large, again, I just want to go play the game. You know, mom here, take the rose, take this letter. Let's go. But for moms and dads and uncles and guardians and older brothers uh it's 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 a it it's a rite of passage they know what's about ready to start happening it's senior night in the fall next thing you know it's going to be you know winter homecoming and you know spring break and then they're graduating you know and I just lived it just went through it last year so I I, I, I empathize more than ever with those parents so um to me those are all the emotions that make a senior night uh very very special not only for our players but certainly for our parents Lex said something yesterday when we were doing the, the JV game, which is posted, if everybody would like to uh, check it out on the broadcast page, their nice victory by the uh, JV team yesterday. Yep. And, and it, it, it like hit me because, I mean, I realized like, you've been the coach here for 16 years. Like I'm fully aware of that. But then he made a point like you've given 26 years of your life to the town of Plainfield, to the Plainfield school system, because people forget how long you were an assistant before right. you were the head coach. Like, does that hit you that, like, 
you've been a part of Plainfield more than half of your life. <laughs> that, that's that, like, that, like it, I don't know why that hit me, but I was just like, wow, yeah. that's really incredible. Well, thanks for reminding me that I'm old, Rob. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, I said more than half of your life. I, yeah, well, it. I don't really think of it because I still, you know, you talk about time moving ahead so quickly. I mean, it, it, it still seems like I'm, you know, coaching offensive and defensive line for, you know, for Coach Schwanny, you know, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's, 1999 or 2000 2000 whatever I mean so it's just it's hard to put into context I think a lot of times when you're a teacher because it's like it's almost like you stay the same age because the kids stay the same age that you see if that makes sense it's kind of very weird it's very time machine-esque almost you know uh, but yeah but when you when you start looking at things you're like crap I'm I'm you know I'm I'm seven eight nine years away from retiring you know, and being done with education. And then when you look at it like that, holy crap, I have been here a while. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's all the time. It, it, what an honor. I mean, you know, you got to have a passion to teach and to coach. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I love this job a hundred percent, you know, walking away from it is, is because I love it, not because I hate it. And uh, having the opportunity to do it for so long has just been, is, is, I've been, I've been lucky, you know, and I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm thankful. I think it was the Oklahoma State coach who once famously said, "I'm a man. I'm 40." I think that was uh, I think that was his he, direct quote. That is correct, and he had one heck of a moment. Let me <laughs> let that. Hey, real quick before I let you go, let's thank our sponsors again: CCB Contracting, Geodis, Ganell Financial, Julia Burbridge of Remax Centerstone Plainfield, Kyle Burnfield Mortgage Lender at Flagstar Bank, Team Turley Fairway Mortgage, Baileywood Financial Group, African Plum Home, My IT Indy at MyITIndy.com, I seventy Record Service and Garage, BGW Construction LLC, Beacon Sign Company, Jeff Brown Photography, Karen Alexander Photography, and Whitlow's Towing. Hey. I have seen the photos of you. You, my friend, had one heck of a mullet as well. So don't don't sell yourself that, short. That was a feathered haircut. Let's get the terminology correct. <laughs> hey, Coach, before we let you go, I know as we always do, let's wrap up. Somebody or someone's behind the scenes who make Plainfield football what it is and doesn't always get the credit they deserve. Yeah. Well, you know, you you always do such a good job of, of kind of weaving in some of the things that I'm going to talk about here at the end. And, and you did an excellent job of it once again. And that's our senior class. And uh, as we head into senior night, this is certainly not our it's not our last game uh, for sure. Right. But uh, just want to let all those seniors that, that might listen to this or, or their parents. Um, I just want them to know uh, how proud I am of them um, for sticking things through, for staying here. And, and, and being a part of this community and, and being a part of this football program. Um, tell our seniors at the end that, uh, you know, they'll always be a part of this program. Um, and, and, and it's a, a very special thing. So thank you, seniors. Thank you, senior moms and dads and, and folks. Uh, it's been a great ride for your kids, and we can't wait to, to continue that, this journey uh, on Friday. Well, Coach, let's get a big win on Friday night. Let's, uh, at least for senior night, send these kids out the right way, and we'll look forward to talking to you next Monday. You bet, Rob. Thanks so much.